I was asked the other day if, isn't it not true that at the end of the day, all religions are really just the same? It's not, you know, if you boil it down, it really just comes to, you know, we're supposed to be the best versions of ourselves, being good to others, and really wanting to get a reward in the next life. And the argument was coming from a person whose uh, very close relation is really head deep in uh, yoga and mindfulness. And she does a bit of yoga herself. And uh, this person who's kind of influencing her is just after coming from a convent of Buddhist, uh, what do you call them? They're not nuns, but they're like Buddhist holy women. And the Buddhist holy women were telling them, you know, like, if you're really good in this life and you do your best, you're going to reincarnate in the next life into something good, you know, like a, 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 a more wiser person and a better person. And, and then this woman asked, well, what if, what if you're not good? Uh, well, then you reincarnate into something like a grasshopper, you know, you could get stepped on, you have to be careful, you know, like that's what happens to the bad people. So she was telling me all this and then she's saying, well, listen, I mean, isn't it really kind of boiling down to the same thing? Like the Buddhist nuns, Catholic communities, uh, good practicing Muslims, we're all trying to do the same thing. And that's where we had to say, no, it's not. It's not all the same. And, and you can even in this country, and, and listen, I've done it, you can go into a lot of Catholic schools and go into a lot of Catholic religion classes and you're going to come out with this idea that it really is all the same. Because what's religion class? You learn about the Buddhist monks, you learn about the Muslims, you learn about the Jews, you learn about the Christians, it's all in this bag and you walk away and you're saying, well listen, that's religion. It's not the same. It's very different because when she was explaining this to me, I'm sitting in the parlor and I'm dressed as I'm dressed in a black robe. I'm not from this country. I haven't been in my country for about 16 years. And I'm thinking, listen, if they were all the same, you know, what's really the point of leaving a wife, not married, I'm not going to be married, kids, my own family, my own culture. If it's really all the same at the end of the day, it's pretty ridiculous that I'm in this country, sitting in this parlor wearing a black robe. You see, Christianity, technically speaking, is not just a religion. Islam, Hinduism, Judaism, those are religions. Christianity, if you want to get down to the nitty gritty, get techie with this, Christianity is a revelation because religion is from man. That's what man does. Man reaches towards the heights, to a transcendence, look back to the cavemen, drawing pictures on the wall for something bigger than them. The ocean and the, the lightning bolts, that's all, that must be something bigger than us. That must be God. That's religion. A man's looking up for something bigger than him. Whereas Christianity is God coming down to man. That's revelation. That doesn't happen in any other religion. Where's, where's Muhammad? Look for Muhammad. Is Muhammad walking around alive? The greatest of the prophets? No. Muhammad's not. Buddha showed you a way. The way of Buddha. He didn't say he was the way. Moses, the same thing. Christ comes and says, I am who I am. I am the way. I am God. No other religion is going to give you that. Because Christianity is a person. See, what we're listening today, we're talking about a seed. We're talking about something living, an organism. We have, as Christians, a living person, communion in us. This isn't something that we're coming up with. When I put myself into a posture and I start breathing in a certain way and I start feeling peace come down upon me and I'm trying to get all negative thoughts out of my head and tell myself that I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm turning more and more inside of myself. Be careful, that's dangerous. Yoga is not neutral. And, and the same people who've come up with yoga are going to say it when they look at the West. You guys don't know what you're doing. This is a religious thing. This isn't just some breathing exercise that I do when I'm stressed out. And I'm not ignoring the fact that a lot of people need peace. And a lot of people need to pray and meditate. The society we're living in today, I'm not de denying that. But we have to be there in that spot. We can't be telling them that this yoga is going to get rid of it. We have to be bringing them a real person. 
But if we're not getting this personal relationship out of the faith, something's wrong. You see, if it is a seed, a seed needs to be cultivated and protected. Why? Because the seed is in a lot of danger. There's crows that are going to get at it, which are like the, the devils. Weeds that are going to choke it. That's your love of the world. Your love with the world. Your love with, with fashion. You're in love with what the world teaches. That will choke the faith. There's loads of things out there that can hurt the seed. And if my faith is just boiled down just to Sunday, which is good, I'm not saying this is bad. If it's Sunday Mass, obviously. But if it's just boiled down to I'm coming in and I check off the box because I'm Catholic and I went to Sunday Mass and then the next Sunday I do the same thing, I check off the box. But the whole week in between the two Sundays, there's no looking, no cultivating, no searching, no trying to get this seed to grow into a bigger tree. We're in trouble. Because it is a living organism, because it is a person, I have to be in relationship and I have to be cultivating. Because if not, the seed slowly, slowly gets suffocated. And people out there look at people like us and they say, what's the difference between my religion, my practice, and their practice? I don't see a difference. Because they don't see a person, they don't see a relationship, and they don't see a power, as St. Paul would say. His favorite word was dynamite, dynamism, movement, organism, living. They don't see that in us. And they don't see a difference. That's where we come in. This is where we stop and we say, wow, this is real. The faith is not an idea. The faith is not a practice. The faith is a person. His name's Jesus Christ. And I can know him more. Where? Here in the Eucharist. And if he's here in the Eucharist and I'm only getting him once a week, why don't I try to make a, a fight to get him every day? A little visit to him in adoration? We have to water, we have to nurture, we have to protect, we have to make this seed grow because it's not gonna grow on its own. And let me tell you, this is so essential and crucial. This same woman that was talking to me, she said she knows she can pinpoint the moment when her kids stop going to Mass. She pinpoints the moment when the kids stop going to Mass. Her and the husband, they know exactly what happened. You know what happened? They're on vacation, and in that household, the dad said, Sunday Mass, we're going to Mass. No objections. If the mom were to say, Sunday Mass, we're going to Mass, and someone objected, she had a fight and it wasn't that easy. When the dad said it, it happened. And they said, they're on vacation in a very warm country. They get up in the morning, it's so hot that the dad didn't have much of a desire to go out, to go to the church. And the kids saw it, and he said, lads, look, maybe today we won't go to Mass. The mom goes to Mass, she comes back. When they return to Ireland, they said, if we didn't have to go to, if we didn't have to, go to Mass over there, why do we have to go to Mass here? And both of them know that that was the moment when the kids stopped going to Mass. This is huge. Because when your kids were baptized, you gave them a candle, and that, that fire was lit. And the godparents were told, do not let that flame go out. Do not let that flame go out. Nurture, protect that flame because this is the most important thing you're giving to this child, the little seed of faith. Be careful, bring them up in the faith. The most important thing you have as a human being, and if you have children, the most important thing you have is to pass this on to them because this is the past that gets us into the next life. Which by the way, Christianity believes that hell exists. You know how they say, well, listen, we don't believe that anymore. There's not a single religion that doesn't believe in hell. There's not a single religion that doesn't believe that there are consequences for our actions. Not a single one. So don't, don't bear, like if you've had a priest tell you that, or if you have priests that have been saying that, oh, look, at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal. We love, we know that God's merciful. Be careful because we are free and we have decisions and we make them. And sometimes they seem very small like not going outside because it's too warm, and they end up having huge consequences, huge consequences. Let's wake up, let's embrace, nurture, cultivate, and love our faith, and let's give thanks that we have a mom that's very worried for us as well. Our Lady, she's not gonna let you get lost that easily. The power that you have, 
in your mother, in my mother, is unbelievable. And with this I'll end. Another mother told me yesterday, her son goes out, he's not even T.Y., he's a third year. He goes out of the house with a bottle of orange juice. And the mom's a bit innocent. Boy's going out on Friday night with a bottle of orange juice. He's just gonna have a little bit of orange juice in the park. She, he, she goes out. She gets pictures later on in the afternoon of the scenario. They're in the park, they've all been drinking, and it wasn't orange juice. And the, your man took pictures of everybody, sent them to the mom, said, Mom, they're all off their head, what do I do? And she's saying, well, they're off their head, they're all drinking, of course they're drinking. And she said, have you been drinking? She says, no, Mom, I haven't been drinking. He actually was drinking the orange juice. And she said, you're not a saint, and I know what your, you know, your tendencies are. How come it is that you haven't been drinking? He said, since I've put on the scapular, I can't do that. I've put on the scapula. I can't participate in that. That doesn't make any sense. That a young 14 year old lad's not gonna drink because he's wearing a scapula, unless we really believe that there's power here. There's true power here. That's our blessed mother. You're wearing a scapula, you've got the rosary. You see what I'm saying? This is real. Let's wake this up. Let's examine our conscience and let's say, Lord, you've planted a seed in me. Where is that seed? Is it the tree that you want it to be? Or is it still small? and it's not too late. We'll ask in this Mass for the grace to know that our faith is a person and the person is personal and he's here in the Eucharist every day. Amen.